there's a story breaking that I foresee being spun as a gotcha. But here's my perspective on it. While the DNC is currently happening, to, happening tonight is night four. Tonight, Kamala Harris will officially accept the nomination and she will speak. And the Washington Post put out this article saying that pro-Palestinian delegates will not get speaking slot at the convention. Representatives of, of uncommitted delegates to the convention have been pressing for an opportunity to address the delegates about the devastation in Gaza. So as the videos of the pro-Palestinian activists on this app start to show up with their takes, I want you to keep my perspective in mind, okay? Everyone who has gotten the opportunity to speak on the main stage at the DNC, they are what? They are committed to voting for Democrats. So if you are uncommitted to voting for Democrats in November, why in the world would you believe that they owe you a speaking spot at their convention. Anybody got an answer to that? Why do they think that they are owed a prime speaking spot on the DNC stage when they are not committed to voting for Democrats? That's number one. Number two. Did they approach the RNC? Did you approach the organizers for the Republican National Convention and ask to speak to their people? Did, did you do that? Did the RNC offer you an opportunity to speak at their convention? Okay. Another thing to think about there are currently negotiations taking place. There's tensions, there's fragilities, there's anger, there's frustration happening on all sides, which makes the negotiations tougher. And according to Anthony Blinken, he stated that they have to move so carefully so that things won't just dissipate. These negotiations just won't dissipate. Here's what he said. Two main goals in mind. Uh, the first is to reaffirm the commitment of the United States to Israel's security. That's a commitment that we put into practice virtually every day since October 7th, including when Israel was attacked directly uh, by Iran back in April. Uh, in recent uh, weeks, given the heightened tensions, we have deployed additional assets to the region. Uh, the purpose of the deployment of these assets is not to provoke aggression, but rather to deter it, uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, but also to make clear that if it does, we are fully prepared to defend Israel. Uh, we've coupled this um, effort with an intense diplomatic campaign, virtually a global diplomatic campaign, working with countries around the world to send the message strongly to every concerned party not to take any steps that would escalate tensions, that would risk provoking a wider conflict. Uh, and this, too, has been something we've been working on from day one since October 7th. It's been one of our primary objectives to prevent the conflict from escalating, from spreading to other places. And so this coupling of our military commitments, our security commitments, with an intense diplomatic campaign uh, is something that I'm pursuing on this trip, again, with uh, the intent of making sure that we deter further conflict, uh, but that we're also clearly prepared to defend against it if it comes. But what's most crucial now is that everyone everyone refrain from taking any actions that could fuel further conflict, escalate tensions, 
uh, and uh, result in the spreading uh, of violence and, uh, and conflict. Did you hear what he said? Anthony Blinken basically said everybody needs to walk on eggshells. Everybody needs to watch their mouth. Everybody needs to watch how they're moving publicly in order to prevent further conflict and violence. With that said, I hope people really understand that employees over at the White House, employees over at the DNC, they see what happens on social media. Mm -hmm. They've even seen little old me over here on TikTok and on the other app doing what it is that I do. So much so that they have reached out to little old me. And I'm sure you know that there are several other um, content creators that are also in contact with the White House. I also want you to remember over the past week, two weeks, I want you to remember how content creators like myself that are in support of Kamala Harris, that was in support of Joe Biden and the Democrats. I want you to remember how pro-Palestinian activists on, that, on this app have viciously attacked content creators like myself. Why? Because we are in support of Vice President Kamala Harris. What have they loudly and boldly said to Democrats and content, content creators like myself. Keep Palestinians' names out of your fucking mouth. They've called us their colonizers. Spread anti-blackness, racism, hatred, division. Called Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, a token ethnic. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you, the people over at the DNC and the people over at the White House have been paying attention to all of this going on on social media. Many people said down in the comments, these people are cutting off their nose to spite their faces. Mm -hmm. These pro-Palestinian activists have been loud on this app. The sad part is, is that these pro-Palestinian activists on this app don't represent the entire movement, but because they are the loudest, they are the ones that get seen. And so because we all have to walk on eggshells when it's coming to this whole negotiations process, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the people at the DNC, the Democrats over the DMC are like, hell no, we can't trust them. We don't know what they will actually say once they get to the mic. Unfortunately, this is what happens when those who don't agree with the loud ones don't get loud and speak out against the loud ones. And let me just say this one last thing before I head out. There are huge protests happening outside of the convention hall. The uncommitted are free to continue to use their voices. They are not being silenced. They just have to use their voices and they have to speak outside of the convention hall. I'll see y'all later. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.